This work is based upon the theory and practice set down in the Golden Chain of Homer, a private manuscript translated from a Latin work circa the 14th century, first into French and then into German. The English translation used was derived from the first German publication that appeared in Leipzig in 1723. It deals with the production of a substance termed Gur, or the pre-Adamic earth, from which the three kingdoms of nature themselves can be generated. In other words, this is the primal base material from which all creation arose. In the Christian-dominated Europe of the day, it is easy to see how this area of alchemical experimentation received the title of nature's darkest corner. My interest lied solely in the generating of the animal kingdom of nature. That is, to start with, the generation of small crustacean-like creatures Homer reported could be created from simple rainwater, which was the foundational material of Homer's entire manuscript. What makes this work unique is that this water must be collected during a violent electrical thunderstorm, following which it must undergo the process of putrefaction, chemical breakdown. The putrefaction process produces the gur, or pre-Adamic earth, which precipitates out of the water medium as a grayish, string-like substance. Following this, the experimentalist must obtain the water of air, water of earth, water of water, and water of fire, by successive distillations of the electrified and putrefied rainwater. These waters are then used in certain combination to imbibe the dried gur. It is from this process that the creatures of the animal kingdom referred to above are generated. It is, as it were, an early experiment in spontaneous generation. However, the Golden Chain reports that the creatures generated do not fit any known species or genus. Approximately 200 gallons of rainwater of the type described are required to begin the process. Our experimental efforts in this corner of alchemy were limited while at the Paracelsus Research Society due to the putrefaction and distillation times required, six months to one year. But that work did begin, and the progress made demonstrated to us that there was indeed a basis in fact for what was written in the manuscript. I continued the water work after completing the seven years of classes and produced two papers which were published by Freiter in his journal Essentia, Journal of Evolutionary Thought in Action. The first paper was entitled The Analytical Technique Applied to the Waterwork, A Modern Approach. It appeared in Volume 1, Winter 1980 issue. That essay dealt with the very real everyday problems encountered in collecting and handling such a massive quantity of rainwater Modern techniques of re-electrifying the water and effectively putrefying and distilling it were also given, such that other contemporary workers could also delve into this alchemical branch of nature's mysteries. These techniques were based upon my own successful efforts. After two more years of work, my second paper, On the Generation of Animals, was published in the Essentia Journal, Volume 3, Summer 1982. The cover of the journal featured a color photograph of the gur water combination and the crustacean-like creature that was generated by the Homeric process. The paper itself, complete with numerous photographs, explained the process completely in everyday terms so others working in the field could reproduce the results for themselves. As stated by Homer, the crustaceans that resulted could not be classed into any species or genus when given to zoologists and biologists to identify. Following these successes, Freiter and I had several private discussions regarding what is traditionally described as the blackest area of this dark corner of alchemy, the creation of an homunculus. This was the single goal to which I directed my alchemical investigations after completing the seven years of Paracelsus Research Society classes. According to legend, this creature appears as a miniature human being. That is, it is made from the salt, i.e. possesses a physical body, which is infused with the mercury, or life itself. 
but it does not possess a soul or consciousness in alchemical terms. It is up to the alchemist to work with such a creature and give it a purpose to fulfill. The salt for this grand experiment is the gur or pre-Adamic earth. The mother earth in this context is the body. The mercury of life must come from the father, that is, from the alchemist himself. For in this particular realm of alchemy, only a male alchemist can generate the homunculus, as his seed must impregnate the mother earth. After the impregnation occurs, as with a human child, the cycle of development and growth begins. The rest is left up to the reader to fathom or to reproduce. In closing, it is my sincere hope that the knowledge and instruction presented herein will serve to forever dispel the gross accusations and pseudo-intellectual diatribe leveled against this genius and man who was Frater Albertus, Dr. Albert Richard Rydell. His initiated understanding and love of knowledge and wisdom opened up the secret paths of alchemy to literally thousands of individuals throughout the world. That work is still being carried on today in the private alchemical laboratories of those few of his students who persist in carrying out his highest axiom. Work.